Hey everybody, this is Dave. It's uh, Friday and uh, I'm working on something for the greenhouse. So I'm going to have a box that I use to root uh, cuttings in as well as I may grow th uh, some cold vegetables in it in the fall. It's not going to be big. It's about 17 by 12, um, 18, 18 by 12. And uh, if you imagine, you know, there's two of the sides. So it's going to be pretty deep. I've got some play sand and some gravel that I'm actually going to mix with cuttings. Uh, when you use soil, the cuttings, the roots have a tendency to get clumped up in the soil. If you use sand, it actually is much better because the, the, uh, when you pull the cuttings out, the roots come freely, much free, much easier. And I just wanted to show you, I did not want to use treated lumber. This is untreated lumber. Um, because of all the chemicals in it and everything. And even though treated lumber nowadays is less toxic than it was years ago, um, it's still got some toxic chemicals in it. So what do we do? So if we imagine this is the box, right? Pardon all my stuff laying on the ground. I gotta clean this area up. But if we imagine this is the box, the boxes, these are uh, 10 inch boards. So they're really like nine and a quarter, I think it is. And then, so then there's another side and this is going to then have a floor on it. What we've done is all these pieces I have um, put, uh, we wiped down thoroughly, let me turn that so you can see it, in, with some linseed oil. And we, when you use linseed oil, linseed oil is not toxic. It's not toxic for your plants. It's not toxic. You can grow vegetables in it with no issues whatsoever. But the thing I wanted to talk about for a second here is you really got to be careful is you want to get it, soak it in really good on these edges. If we uh, imagine this board here and you see the grains going this way, imagine those grains is like hundreds, if not, well, thousands probably of little straws and the straws are sealed except for on the ends. So on the ends, when we apply this on the end, it's going to soak in uh, to the wood much farther than when we soak it when we apply it on the sides. Now, that's not to say you don't apply it on the sides, but imagine that you're protecting the outside, again, the outside of a straw, to use that same analogy. But then when you actually soak the ends, it's going to soak down into the wood and it's going to give it much uh, a very good protection and any rot is most likely to start anyway from these ends so you give them a good soak and we're going to put those sides inward for the for the planter we're going to put those sides in and then i've got a sheet of exterior plywood that i'm going to cut for the bottom and that'll get a soaking also once it's all done we'll do a do a drain hole in a corner and uh, when I water it, we'll have a, a fitting there that the um, water will drain out into a bucket, any excess, so that it's not just sitting in the, um, accumulating in the um, box. So that's it. That's a simple planner. I'll uh, maybe put a, another video together and show it to you done. And uh, we'll, once we got it all squared away, but I just wanted to talk about protecting the wood in a manner that's safe for your food, safe for your vegetables, and safe for you, of course. So, all right, so here's the box completed. Uh, well, not completed, sort of completed. Pardon my mess, I'm in the, uh, in the new greenhouse and I'm literally working in the greenhouse and working on the greenhouse at the same time. So um, I've got all these plants started. You got some broccoli there. I got one lone cabbage popping up there. These are some uh, tomato, or excuse me, uh, potato seeds, not seed potatoes, but s potato seeds. I tried some last year and they sprouted and I didn't stay on top of them. It was no fault of the grower who sent them to me. She uh, was very nice, um, but I didn't do well. So now I'm doing, I've got them started again. These are potato from potato, potato berries and they actually will grow genetically different as opposed to if you grow a potato from a seed potato it's going to grow exactly like the parent so it's this actually allows for some genetic diversity um uh oh i got all sorts of stuff i got tomatoes but I, that's not what i'm that's not what that's not what we're here for but uh the fig rootings are still going my um my couple uh 
Oh, Rose and Sharon are going. And I'm still talking about plants, even though that's not what this video is supposed to be about. Those are my tomatilla. They're going to have to be thin sooner than later. And then here's some more tomatilla that are just popping up. And uh, these are a whole bunch of uh, um, basically unspecified tomato. And then I've got a whole bunch back here of the sweet uh, cherry that I was talking about earlier in another they're the uh, smaller smaller tomatoes that are so sweet. And then Siberian, which is really one of my favorites, a medium-sized tomato with a lot, of, a lot of meat and a lot of flavor. And those are coming up like crazy on my shelf that I built. But anyway, I'm sorry. I, I know I labeled this the planter box, but okay. So here it is. Put, we put it on legs, took a jigsaw, measured it, took a jigsaw, cut half the leg that's every single leg now the box when it's full of sand and uh, a little some gravel it's actually sitting on the leg that will as opposed to just having a leg screwed in from the side this will provide it much more support and you can see each one there's two on this side and let me get a little bit under the counter here then there's two on that side the entire insides have been as i said coated with linseed oil I have then taken um, uh, clear uh, caulk, uh, silicone caulk, and we have caulked all the cracks. Don't make fun of my caulking, oh, look at that, my, my caulking abilities or lack thereof. However, that's all done. The only thing left now is we're going to, probably through this leg here, we're going to go ahead and mount this right to the, the, um, the studs here for the wall. That will provide some um, provide some support, and down at the bottom to keep the legs from bowing, I'm gonna run a support across that'll keep them uh, in line. Beyond that, the only thing left to do is in this corner right here. We're gonna drill a drain hole, and take a piece of PVC pipe that has a elbow that bends down. We're gonna actually push that in there. I'm gonna silicone caulk all around it. And when I then, when I put, so imagine this with sand in it, and um, we put the rooted, root, rooted uh, cuttings in, or the cuttings in to root, and then, um, then as we water it each day, because they have to be provided with water almost every day, especially in sand, as they get watered, that water's going to go down. I don't want that water collecting and laying on this bottom. The bottom's been protected best I can, but I still don't want water laying there. So we're going to put a drain here. It tilts a little bit towards this side, and uh, the box does. We're going to put a drain right there. Like I said, have a small piece of PVC pipe come out and turn down, and a five-gallon bucket on the floor and that will catch any excess water and has helped me save water as well also because right now, while I do want to do rain catchment off the roof, I don't have that set up. So let me turn you around real quick. So that's where I'm at with that. And uh, I got a lot done today, so I'm, I'm excited over that. My door's blowing in the wind. Um, it's been so windy and so rainy here. I don't know about, we're in the mid-Atlantic states and. I don't know where you all are, but oh my gosh, we've had just a crazy amount of rain and wind. So that's going to be for, the box is going to be for rooted cuttings. Um, it is deep because I would like to actually also use it in the winter for possibly some small, a small crop of root vegetables, namely probably carrots or, or uh, something like that, that I could grow. It's cold out here, but it would be warm, warm enough during the day, especially in, inside the house, that they should grow fine. So that's it. That's what I'm doing. Um, if you like what you see, as always, please like, like, share, and subscribe. If you're one of those people that constantly comes back and is lurking in the corners and watches the videos, please hit the like button. Uh, please hit the uh, subscribe button. It would help me immensely. I appreciate it. And uh, that's that. That's that's the YouTube pleading for uh, for a slightly bigger audience, but it helps get the channel out there and helps other people discover things that they may find helpful. So on that, stay safe, stay prepared, uh, have a happy Easter if you uh, celebrate, and I will see you on the next video. Thank you.